This is a CJSR podcast. Volunteer powered. Listener supported. Campus and community. Radio. Podcast. Podcast. Radio. Radio Radio and and podcast. podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Right? I think think my family is kind of sick of me (laughs) making (laughs) efforts. Hi, my name is Melania Antoshko, and you're listening to That's Food. That's Food is a podcast from CGSR, Edmonton's campus and community radio station, handmade with love by University of Alberta students and community members, telling the backstory to food in Edmonton, one meal at a time. I find that following foodies on Instagram is usually pretty informative for my quest for food. They always post about new restaurant and cafes openings, sometimes even before places open. I also love looking through food Instagram accounts whenever I'm traveling to see where the quote unquote hot places are that I should check out. TripAdvisor and Yelp are so 2015. As you can probably tell, I am on Instagram a lot. So it got me thinking, who and what's behind the aesthetic food photos? So today I sat down with Queenie from Eats with Queens, a local food Instagram page with more than 2000 followers. We talked about what it takes to be a food influencer, the day to day behind the scenes of running a food Instagram page, and how to take the perfect mouth-watering food pick. Enjoy! Hi Queenie, how are you doing? I'm good today, how are you? Good. I know it's been a while since breakfast, but we always ask this breakfast question on our episodes. So what did you have for breakfast today? (laughs) It's actually funny because I actually don't eat breakfast. Um, I like to start my day not having it just because I don't feel hungry and I'd rather eat a bigger lunch. (laughs) So, yeah. So what do you have for lunch? What was for lunch? I had some potatoes and I had some eggs and some crackers and some hummus. Yeah, Mm, Mm -hmm. That sounds really good. And you have a food Instagram. So I guess like taking it back to the beginning why food? I've always enjoyed food and I've always enjoyed like taking pictures of food and before the whole Instagram thing I would just take it on Snapchat and just like post on my Snapchat and then people would ask me where it's from and whatnot and I just love like food in general just love talking about it so yeah that's why I decided to start a food Instagram because I just wanted to collect pictures of my food because I was kind of running out of storage too and it was like a place where I could share with people cool when did you start your account it was back in 2018 Uh, it's been a while I first launched it a bit before I went on a Japan trip so going to Japan it was a nice way to uh, commemorate those like foodie adventures I had but also uh, before that I did I made the account long time ago, a couple of months before, I think I started like mid, mid 2018, but I made the account a couple months before that, but I was always a little hesitant to post because I was always scared. Oh, would anyone like my pictures? But here we are now. (laughs) Yeah. And it's really great. And you post so consistently and the Mm -hmm. food pics are always so nice. (laughs) Thank you. And what does the daily life of a food Instagrammer look like? I think it just varies per person. But for me, I also do work full time. So of course, I do the usual nine to five. And then a lot of times I like to curate my posts at night, just because I find that that's when people are more engaged on Instagram. So I guess, yeah, start of the day, do my usual thing. And then at night is when I plan my posts. And just try to decide like what I want to eat next. So yeah. Yeah, I was just about to ask you. So do you plan where you want to go out to eat ahead of time? And like how do you plan that? I think it really varies. I like to have a bucket list of places I want to go that I saved from other foodies. And how I plan it is that once I save all those posts, I kind of like go through it and decide what I'm feeling that day kind of thing there's not really like a set plan to it it's just more so what I'm feeling and what my friends are feeling because I like to go out to eat with my friends do you ever feel any pressure to eat out and take photos all the time or 
Is it just what you love to do? Sometimes, yes, because there have been times when I just didn't have much to post. Um, For example, like with COVID, um, it was definitely like a setback to the Instagram just because with the whole pandemic, it wasn't very reasonable to always go out, right? And it's not like we could go out. Um, And then so I just didn't feel like posting. I mean, I do have like a bunch of pictures I could post, but I just didn't feel like posting, but I also felt the pressure too, just because my followers are following me for a reason. So I'm sure they're expecting like some kind of post, like at least a couple times a week or a week kind of thing. So definitely there is some pressure, but um, I think it's very important to balance it because burnout is a thing. (laughs) So yeah. Yeah, I feel like it'd be so stressful being a public figure or an influencer when a lot of people are stressing out for COVID. That was a really stressful time. You don't really know what's going on. And I was wondering how long does it usually take for you to think of a post, take the photos, and then post it? Usually it doesn't take too long. Whenever I go out, I just take the pictures and million different angles and then I go home and then I guess it really depends on my mood (laughs) to post I don't really have a set schedule to post and like think about all these things but when I just feel like I haven't been posting for a while I typically like to post every two to four days uh, preferably and then I guess when it my max would be four days. I would like look for a picture and then just think of a caption, try to think of something good. And then I just post it. So I wouldn't say it takes that much of a thought process to do. Nice. I find it's always really hard to think of captions for Instagram posts. Do you have any tips? It's definitely hard sometimes, but sometimes I think of inspiration, like for example, the weather, like yesterday I posted picture about like some fuzz so I was just like fuzz like perfect for like chilly weather and just kind of like oh make sure everyone's driving safe I think really think about external forces or if I really can't think of anything I would I guess describe the picture I think with food it's a little easier because you can describe what you're eating so that kind of adds some value to the post And I guess if you really can't think of anything, I think it's always good to just search up for something. Maybe think of a pun to match with the picture or look at other pictures for inspiration. I think that's how I get my inspiration for um, captions. Yeah, those are really great tips. And throughout your whole entire Instagramming experience, and maybe even before, have you had any weird or funny experiences? Because my Instagram, I've never revealed my face or anything so it's very mysterious people are always wondering what I look like and it's funny because I don't have my camera on today either but like with my Instagram I just never revealed my face in the past I've had a lot of interesting messages about (laughs) from random people just asking me what I look like I get a lot of like spam messages just like really weird messages like that. But other than that, I haven't had any weird uh, encounters with anyone. Yeah, that's really interesting that people care that much. Know how you look like. Right? It's like I've had, I think it was a couple years ago, there was one person that just kept messaging me for months asking me what I look like, (laughs) which is interesting because I thought they follow me for food, not so much care so about my appearance. So yeah, that was really interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of creepy, but... <laughs> yeah, it, it was pretty creepy, I gotta say. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I guess you touched on a little bit that you used to before would take mm-hmm. photos at restaurants anyways. Yes. Do you find that when you're trying to take a good photo of the food? Does it take away from the restaurant experience? Yes and no, because um, especially when I eat out with people, I always tell them to not eat. (laughs) And then I have to take some pictures and then like it gets a little cold. And then, but I don't think so either because, because I 
I like to take pictures of my food. A lot of times I influence my friends to take pictures of their food too. So it's kind of like a bonding experience as well because they would be like, oh, I really love the angle you took it. Can you teach me how to do it too? Or can you take it for me? So I think it doesn't take it away that much. I guess that depends who I'm eating it with. If it's like with friends, then yeah, it's like a bonding experience as well. But then if, for example, if I'm eating with, I guess, family or like the elderly people, then they wouldn't understand it as much (laughs) because they're just waiting to eat and they're just trying to bond. So I guess it takes away from some bonding aspect in that way. Yeah, I find that even when I take photos sometimes of my food and I'm with my parents, they always make fun of me. And then I hear about it for like months after. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah. But it also helps that my mom likes to take pictures too. So, and they've gotten used to me acting like that. (laughs) Yeah. They got used to me taking pictures anyway. So it's been a couple of years. So I'm sure they're like, whatever about it now. So it's fine. (laughs) Yeah. They're probably super used to it by now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Um, because even now when the food comes, they always make sure I take my, my pictures before they eat. So it's nice. They keep me accountable too. That's so nice. And do you have any tips for anyone on, I know this is kind of hard to talk and explain because we're on a podcast, but do you have any tips for taking photos of your food? Personally, I prefer taking pictures if there's natural lighting. I think natural lighting is always the best in taking photos. And I always like to take my pictures either at like a 45 degree angle (laughs) very specific or I would do like a overhead shot of everything so either I like to do close-ups at a 45 angle or I like to do overhead shot of everything always make sure there's no shadows of anyone in the frame I think that's pretty much my tips it's kind of hard explaining like you said just because I'm not in the groove of like doing it I think it's just become so natural to me that it's hard to exactly pinpoint um how I do how I take my pictures do you edit your pictures at all um if I find that the picture isn't as bright as I would like it to be or if it's not as sharp I do edit it there are some some of my pictures they're just natural Mm -hmm. So, but a lot of times I do adjust the lighting and whatnot. So, but I wouldn't to do too drastic of a change to my photos. So, yeah, because you don't want the people to think that it looks like something else and then like false advertising. Right. Yeah. It's like when you change it too much, it's like, oh, this wasn't what I was expecting. Yeah. <laughs> right. When they order the same thing, it's like expectations versus yeah. reality. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Have you had any unexpected challenges as a food Instagrammer? Not really. I think the only thing would just be the burnout. Just because like every foodie has a life outside of Instagram, Mm -hmm. right? I I think a lot of times like people think that this is like full-time gig, but it really isn't. And that there's, you don't really think about the life someone has outside of Instagram. Yeah, I don't think I've had any really unexpected challenges except for burnouts. So, yeah. Yeah, that's true. It must get so stressful because I follow a lot of different foodies on Instagram and they post so frequently. It's just like all the time. Right? It it seems like it's their full-time thing, but I think it's just because the foodies that post very frequently I think it's just they have a large following so a lot of restaurants just reach out to them all the time it's just yeah I would think it's like full-time too if I didn't really know the backstory to it so yeah it's very interesting like whenever I see a a food Instagrammer sharing a restaurant and it was an ad I guess it's hard sometimes to think that like the food is genuine but then at the same time, it might be good. Have you had that struggle before? Making sure that it's uh, authentic and you're being honest with your view? I think for me personally, I always like to be pretty honest with what I eat. 
on what I choose to eat. I think that people know me as like a pretty honest person when it comes to food. <laughs> I don't really like to sugarcoat if something's good or not, but I understand where you're coming from when I do see um, other foodies when they promote it as an ad. It's sometimes it is hard to believe whether it's actually good or not, but I think at the end of the day, you just got to trust their judgment. <laughs> Um, so it's it's really hard. I can see where you're coming from. It's like, is it really good? But I'm sure they're being honest too. So there's always there's a really fine line for that. <laughs> so mm-hmm. yeah, and I guess sometimes um, even restaurants might like comp their meal, but they won't even mention that in the caption. So yeah. I guess just be aware. Yeah, mm-hmm. and take other people's opinions as well. Yeah, for sure. Can't always rely on influencers too much because I think everyone has their own different taste so I find that sometimes like another food foodie like something I sometimes don't like it yeah so I think it's really about personal preference and what you like and what you don't like so I think it's not always good to always judge based on one foodie and their taste yeah and what do you think what do you think it takes to be a food instagrammer Mm, what it takes I think having the confidence to post a lot (laughs) I think it really depends on your personality I don't think there really is a set criteria to be a foodie I think as long as you just enjoy food and I think if you enjoy sharing and just taking pictures engaging with people I think that's what's most important anyone can be a foodie or food instagrammer Mm-hmm. I think as long as just you just enjoy taking pictures and being consistent with posting and enjoy uh, engaging. Mm-hmm. And I saw a couple of days ago you were making Portuguese tarts. Yes. <laughs> this is very difficult. <laughs> yeah, that was actually my first time making them. Okay, I kind of cheated a little. I didn't make the crust because I was kind of lazy, but I really wanted to perfect the the brown top mm-hmm. on the egg tart. So yeah, that's what I was doing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I was actually watching the Great Canadian Baking Show on Sunday, and that was their technical challenge. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. and I was watching your stories beforehand, and I was like, oh my gosh, she's <laughs> doing this. I'm on the Great Baking Show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm one yeah. of the contestants. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think maybe a couple of them got the brown tops, but they really all kind of failed it but yeah it's it's harder than I thought because like I would bake it and then I would broil it for a couple like seconds minutes and then the edges would just turn brown and I'm just like oh no (laughs) I kind of burnt it so (laughs) yeah yeah they said Mm -hmm. that it has to be like really 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 warm oven like 500 degrees yeah the recipe I followed at first they said 450 and then I thought that was maybe a little too hot so the next two times I actually made it at a lower temperature which kind of helped but not really too (laughs) I might have to keep practicing so yeah I guess you'll just have to keep trying and then maybe buying (laughs) some too (laughs) right I think I think my family is kind of sick of me (laughs) making (laughs) it I guess I just wanted to ask with this question, um, since mm-hmm. you post a lot of food from restaurants, have you gotten better at yes. cooking from home? I've always been cooking. So I like in junior high, high school, I have always took cooking classes. So I wouldn't say I'm bad at cooking. <laughs> um, but I think going to restaurants, really tasting their food, it really makes me want to eat healthier at home. <laughs> I guess that's what changed me more because I want to create a balance. So I wouldn't say it's like better at cooking, but I guess making healthier choices. Mm. Yeah, I never thought of that really. Restaurant food is usually not the healthiest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for the upcoming year, do you have any predictions on the food trends? Definitely there has been a more of a rise of vegan and I guess imitation meat, as you can see in like a lot of those big chain restaurants. I think... Uh, particularly in Edmonton I'm predicting that there will be more and more I guess like for example like Japanese chain 
restaurants or cafes coming. I don't know if you heard, but Fua Fua, they are opening here. So Fua Fua is a really popular Japanese pancake, souffle pancake chain. They're expected to open this month. I'm assuming end of the month. I haven't heard anything about it yet. So um, yeah, and then I think definitely a lot more different Asian chains will be opening here. So I think definitely the Japanese trend is definitely coming more. Um, and a lot more businesses in the foodie scene, I think, will grow. Yeah, I don't know if I had um, those Japanese pancakes, but I had had those like really, really fluffy ones. I don't know how I feel about them, but mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, for sure. Yeah, the souffle pancakes, they're like really thick mm-hmm. and really soft and jiggly. I've had it before in Japan, not this a particular chain but another one I heard this one is really good too so I'm excited for that mm-hmm. I feel like everyone's gonna be on that <laughs> right it's it's kind of like Pablo's when they first opened the line was so long and then even I don't know if you had Sajiri mm-hmm. like the matcha matcha uh, tea house yeah mm-hmm. that was crazy so I think definitely more and more Japanese uh, chains will open or even Asian chains in general so mm-hmm. Yeah, I love both of those. Mm-hmm. I just had Pablo like last week or something. Oh, for the yeah. First time. <laughs> was so good. Right. Just this is the last question for this portion. Um, but do you have any tips for anyone that wants to get into food Instagramming? I think just start honestly. Like, I think that if you enjoy taking pictures, then just start making Instagram. You can always reach out to me <laughs> for any personal tips. I think when you start food Instagram, it's always nice to build relationships with other foodies because when you go to those events, it's always nice meeting them. So I think that building connections is always important. And yeah, and just just do your thing. And I think people will follow you for what you post. So I don't think this is something to be very stressed about. Nice. Those are great tips. Thank you. <laughs> And now for the next portion, Uh, this is brand new, never done before on That's Food, or at least I have never done this, but it's a speed round. Ooh, okay. Just to see like your opinion on a couple of things. So I guess there's no clock on the wall, but let's just try to do (laughs) as quick as possible. Okay. Okay. Coffee versus tea. Mm, Tea. Going out or staying in? This one's kind of tough because I've always used to like to go out, but I think COVID really made me enjoy staying in more. But I still do enjoy going out. Okay. Takeout versus delivery? Hmm. I think takeout. Favorite foodie location in Edmonton? Like White Ave downtown, 124th? Uh, I think definitely White Ave. Breakfast versus dinner? I guess lunch versus dinner. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's actually, I actually do like uh, breakfast food more. So I got to say breakfast. (laughs) Okay. Favorite three restaurants in Edmonton? Ah, that's kind of (laughs) hard. I have so much. (laughs) Okay. You can do five. Oh, (laughs) I think I'll just like try to think. Okay. My favorite uh, Korean restaurant would be Hanjan. I've always like enjoy going there for their bulgogi fries they're so good and then favorite pizza place I really love Sep's pizza last year was such a trend for having picnics at Walterdale with Sep's pizza because it's so close by (laughs) um uh and yellowed for their ice cream I love their soft serve ube is so good with their charcoal cone oh (laughs) and right it's so Um, good and I love the lobster rolls from Blowers and Grafton. Mm-hmm. They just opened a Windermere location a couple weeks ago. So if you guys live in the south side, that's the spot. <laughs> and I guess for sushi, oh, this one's kind of tough because I love sushi and there's so much sushi places I like. But I think for the more fancier rolls, I really like Japanese bistro. And for sashimi, I really like Sushi wasabi. Okay, this is definitely more than five. 
<laughs> it's okay. Keep going. Um, also, I've never had this, but it seems really good. I know I heard good, great things about it. Munga sashimi. They've just opened a brick and mortar store. They used to be just takeout only from this other place. Um, and now they have a brick and mortar store. I think those are my top favorite for now. <laughs> so. Yeah, always changing. Um, cool. Favorite coffee shop? Favorite coffee shop? Oh, I'm actually not a huge coffee person. But if I were to choose, there's one that's kind of new. It's pretty nice. It's called Cafe um, Lorraine. I don't know if I said that right. It's really aesthetic inside. I've This is not coffee, but I got this white lavender steamer. It was really good. It's like steamed milk with lavender syrup. Um, it's really good, especially if you drink it at night. Very relaxing. So yeah, I actually live really close to Cafe La- Lauren. Lauren. I don't know. Oh, is that how you say it? Uh, I'm not French. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Let's just hope one of yeah. us said it right. <laughs> or both of them. Yeah. <laughs> and what food or cuisine do you think is missing in Edmonton? It's this is not really like something I think about all the time. I think it's this is like something I think when I like go to other places. Because I do go to Calgary somewhat frequently. So I really like how they have a lot of katsu places. Um, so like fried uh pork or chicken. They have like really good spots for that. Definitely wish we have more places like that. I think also, I think if we had, for example, in Vancouver, they have like a night market where you could like have or like try food. I think that if we had something like that here, it would be really nice um, for foodies, especially because you can try a lot of things at once (laughs) in one spot. Other than that, I don't, at the moment, I can't really think or like pinpoint like exact cuisine or food. So I think those are both good options, like good options. Yeah, a night market. If we had more of a night scene, I think definitely the night market thing would be a really big hit. Yeah, I would love that. That'd be so much fun. Right. Okay. Two more questions left on the speed round. Yes. Not very speedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not very speedy I'm like taking my time yeah. answering, so. <laughs> um what do you think is the most underrated restaurant in Edmonton underrated hmm. I guess um the next question is most overrated restaurant uh-huh. you can think of oh. both <laughs> <laughs> most, um, I can't like like an actual restaurant I think the most recent thing that I find overrated is probably boba club it's just been a really trendy bubble tea shop in um the north side i find that personally for me i this is based on my own judgment so just because i don't like sweets i don't like things overly sweet so i think the hype with this place is just a little too much because it's too sweet (laughs) for me and I've had a pe- some people like agree with me on this one where it's either it's too sweet or there's not enough flavor to their drinks, but there's a lot of hype over it. So definitely this is like my personal judgment on it and underrated. I think probably earlier I mentioned Sushi Wasabi. I don't think a lot of people really go to that place that much. They have like really good sashimi. So I have to go check it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really good. I would say their sashimi is really fresh and it's really thick. Yeah, I haven't had sashimi in so long. Right? I'm craving sushi so much. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, now I want to go. Right? Yeah. After this. <laughs> for sure. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Um, yeah. It been, has been really fun and, and I loved hearing you talk about all the food places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was really fun. Thank you for inviting me on the podcast. This is my first one, so it was really fun to do. So, <laughs> Yay. Do you take a photo before you eat your food? Well, you're not alone. According to Digimind blog, 69% of millennials take a picture or video of their food before eating. The same research found that food lovers consume four times more content than the average Instagram user and connect to Instagram an average of 18 times a day. From this research, you can tell that everyone loves a good food photo. So post it. And that's 
that's it for this episode of That's Food. Today's episode was produced by me, Melania Antoshko, with help from the That's Food team. Thanks, Queenie from Eats with Queens, for speaking with me. Our music is by Doug Hoyer. You can find all our episodes on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify, and on our website, thatsfood.transistor.fm. You can contact us at thatsfood at cgsr.com. We are That's Food CGSR on Facebook and on Instagram. That's Food is produced at CGSR in Edmonton on Treaty 6 territory. But is it food? That's food! Again, I'm not counting down, I'm not counting it down.